Hello my fellow chairs, welcome back to EU4, Mission Tree Only, the series where we look at a nation's mission tree and complete it within its entirety and without expanding outside of that mission tree. Today's nation is the nation of Brandenburg and yes that also means we are also going to be playing as Prussia so we're going to be doing Brandenburg and Prussia today. This nation is one of the most played nations in all of EU4. I did a tier list a few like a year or two ago and this came up as being like the second or third most played nation in all of EU4. It's completely understandable as to why you're going to have the strongest army in the entire game. You're literally going to have space marines. It's an army uh, with a state and pretty much it's all about quality over quantity. But Brandenburg ideas, while pretty decent, the Prussian stuff is where you get all your space marines. Brandenburg ideas give you construction costs, cost to fabricate claims, state maintenance, infantry combat, tax, stability modifier, morale of armies, diplo rep, and imperial authority modifiers. So if you are interested in becoming the emperor, Brandenburg's a good choice to do just that. You also get national unrest and also uh, nobility and burger loyalty equilibrium. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it as Brandenburg. So here we are as the small but relatively mighty nation of Brandenburg. So looking at the Brandenburg mission tree, pretty much Brandenburg and Prussia share the exact same mission tree. So what you see here is what you get aside from two missions when you actually form Prussia that pop up over here that refer specifically to your army. So some of the early on missions that we have to do is like this one, Berlin, uh, renovate Berlin. We have to dev it up to 25, build a temple or a cathedral here, and have a workshop. And then we're going to get Matter of Berlin, uh, which gives us monthly splendor and monthly admin uh, until somebody sieges or conquers the province of Berlin. We also have Reclaim Newmark, which we're going to get an event uh, as long as we're not in debt. It actually gives us these two provinces for free. Well, I say for free, but for like 100 ducats and... Uh, two town a quarter makes off with a bunch of our money We're gonna get those and we're gonna get a bunch of permanent claims and other things as well. There's also the ons box session here uh, This guy is our heir, I believe yes So when our ruler actually dies we make ons a PU partner So we want to make sure that this guy survives current ruler probably not so much and then this mission shows strength. We actually need to own 15 provinces in northern Germany. And uh, after that, we get a bunch of permanent claims pretty much on Saxony and also on Brunswick and stuff like uh, all those nations over here. And like my previous video where I did where I covered Hungary, I'm not really going to worry about these generic missions at all and stuff. Because again, this is highlighting Brandenburg and Prussia's unique mission tree. Um, these missions... Almost every single nation in the age, I believe every single nation in the HRE has these missions right here. So we're not going to worry about those. In terms of allies, especially for Brandenburg, it's actually super easy to ally Poland. You can pretty much Royal marry them right at the start. Uh, same thing with Austria. We want to make sure that we at least get Austria because they are the emperor. That's going to make expansion within the HRE a lot easier because they're not going to be asking you for land back. So, literally within the very first month, we're agreed with this event, Holozorn, ruler of Brandenburg. Uh, we can either build our own government institutions, meaning we lose some admin, and until the death of our ruler, we have national unrest and monthly autonomy change, and also our clergy actually loses 1%, or, yeah, 1% of the land, or they gain 1% of the land and corruption. I'm going to go for this top option. Okay, finally, the Fate of Newmark event happened. I think what it, I ended up having to do was actually sell some titles. I think you actually have to reach 100 ducats in order for this event to happen. Uh, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and do this. Uh, we can either make the Grandmaster a generous offer of 100 ducats, or we're just going to say, nah, we're just going to keep our money. But we're going to do the first option. Typically, the Teutonic Order is going to accept because they need the money to fight the Poles. And perfect. We get our two provinces here. And now we complete our very first mission, Reclaim Newmark, which actually, as I mentioned earlier, we just had to own Newmark and Dromberg. This gives us permanent claims on Vorpommen, uh, Hinterpommen areas, 
and any time that we conquer provinces that are not part of the HRE, uh, it will grant one of the following benefits. And now we're going to go straight into the whole Pomeranian secession thing. Uh, we're going to go ahead and invade both Volgast and Stettin. They both don't really have any allies, so I'm going to just go ahead, raise up my army maintenance, and attack both of these nations right away. So this is perhaps the most important thing when playing as Brandenburg and you're trying to form Prussia. As soon as you complete the Reclaim Newmark mission, or if you just go straight into invading Volgas and you're not playing like how I am, using the mission tree, you need to take the province of Stolp and vassalize this nation. The reason being is once you get four provinces here owned by you and your non-tributary subjects, including vassals, you then get permanent claims over here in the Teutonic Order, pretty much their entire nation. And it's very critical that you do this before December of 1449, because the Polish are going to attack them as soon as that truce is up. And as you guys can see, I've been currying favors with them, but I'm probably going to have to promise them land, but I'm going to use them to actually help me invade the Teutons. Luckily, I was able to complete this war just in the nick of time as you know, it's about to be October uh, 1449. I'm going to be able to take Stolp and make Volgast into a subject. And now I could go ahead and complete this mission, getting my permanent claims over here on the Teutonic Order. So we're just going to wait until their truce with uh, Poland is up. And then, yes, we are just going to go ahead and attack the Teutons. Okay, so I can actually call on both Austria and Poland with the promise of land. We'll go ahead and do just that. Poland obviously wants like their entire country. I want like their entire country. I'm going to set all this as provinces in trust. Austria obviously can't get to any of these provinces whatsoever. Okay, so to start out with on the Teutons, I'm just going to take these two provinces to prevent the Danzig Confederation thing from happening, and Poland's going to get the province of Kolm. Uh, and the reason I'm doing this is because Poland pretty much occupied the majority of the Teutons. And I won't get as much AE, but obviously there will still be a good amount of AE I get from this. So that's good enough just to start out with. And we will be back as soon as our truce is up in 1459. 1463, my bad. And I guess uh, Poland's flipping a hostile towards us now. So kind of rip using Poland for whatever we want. But uh, maybe, just maybe we could get somebody like Denmark next. Or maybe even Muscovy to help us out if uh, we need to take down Poland. Which, I mean, eventually we're going to have to regardless. Which, I mean, Denmark's immediately friendly towards me. And this could be kind of risky because obviously Sweden. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to risk it. I'm going to take Denmark as an ally. And we are going to go ahead and invade uh, Staten. And our ruler finally died, unfortunately, while leading our army. So we actually lost two stab. Uh, obviously, we're going to choose this option here, make Ansbach a junior partner. Otherwise, we get stability. I'm going with this one. We're going to complete this mission, and we're going to get a bunch of permanent claims. We also now get a kind of a timed event here. Once we complete this mission here, uh, we have five years to complete the Franconian Conquest, which basically just requires us to own these six provinces. And once we do that... Uh, we actually, our ruler gets one additional mill, and we also get uh, extra power projection that's permanent. Otherwise, we are going to lose our lands and upper in lower Franconia, and we're going to suffer a bunch of AE. For our tier 2 government reform, I'm going to go with the Ministralis promotion. Cheaper advisors, monthly favor growth is nice, and the additional privilege for our nobility is also good. Alternatively, obviously, strength and noble privileges is really nice for the additional manpower, but I already have increased levies, so should be fine. Okay, with our Pomeranian stuff completely uni unified under us and also our subject Volgast, uh, we're just going to chill until our truce with the Teutons is over. I'm also going to go ahead and ally Russia. That's right, we were able to land in alliance with them. And uh, yeah, we're going to focus on the Teutons, hopefully full we'll annex them in our next war, uh, which we are going to incur a ton of AE on. So I want to make sure I reduce down as much of my AE as possible before we go ahead and just full we'll annex the Teutons. In the meantime, I'm also going to go ahead and start working on my mission to dev up Berlin. Uh, we also have the Renaissance that we have to spawn as well too. 
and uh yeah got some economic stuff that we just have to do in the meantime oh i guess disaster in franconia just uh i guess her subject unites into franconia yeah oh man uh but i mean i guess it completed the franconia conquest <laughs> at least oh i i should have made that a priority i didn't even think about that Okay, let's go ahead and attack the Teutons. Uh, Austria, I think if I ask them to just prepare for war, should be okay. And sure enough, all right, let's go ahead and do this. I need to at least get Marienburg, because if Poland invades them, if I could just simply diplovasilize the Teutons, I could call on all my allies to beat up on Poland. So let's make sure we get the capital first. Okay, so the two tons just unconditionally surrender to us. We're just going to full annex these guys. We're going to get a little bit of a coalition. I'm okay with that. We're just going to chill, relax, have a grand old time. And we're going to go ahead and complete this mission. Gaining Prussian as an accepted culture. And uh, every province in these areas will gain a development. So I'm going to core these up first. And then I'm going to select this mission. And then we're going to get permanent claims on the Silesia and Lusatia areas in uh, Bohemia over here. What I'm also going to do is concentrate this dev into my capital area and we're going to state up all this stuff and lower autonomy here so then that way uh, I get more money manpower and sure it means more rebels but that, that's fine. Tier 3 government reform we're just going to go with uh, expanded royal court for the extra advisor and reform progress growth perfect. First idea group time. This is, this is probably going to be our only Diplo idea group. We're going to just open up with Diplo ideas. I need the extra diplomat to maintain AE and all that stuff. We have a lot of expansion we're going to have to do pretty much by the end of this mission tree. We're going to own like almost all of North and South Germany and we're going to form the German Empire. So like I said, we got quite a bit of work to do. So yeah, Diplo ideas, then from this point onwards, it's all going to be either military stuff like quality, offensive ideas. We're also going to be picking up innovative ideas to stack up that infantry combat ability. In fact, that's probably going to be our next idea group. And then we're going to do quality ideas afterwards. And I am going to go ahead and start integrating my subject of Volgas. It's going to make a lot of these HRE nations kind of hate me a bit more. But I do want that dev into my country for right now. And uh, it's just going to make me a lot stronger. But now I could complete the mission show strength because now I own 17 provinces out of the 15 that I need in order to complete this mission. And now I get a bunch of permanent claims on northern Germany. So now I could expand over here and also in the Magdeburg and Anhalt, which is great because Bohemia is guaranteed by Poland. So it's going to be a little bit since. For me to expand this way though i would not be surprised if moldavia decides to break free very soon since they are supported by both muscovy and bohemia so really in the meantime we're just gonna go ahead and attack a lot of these guys like magdeburg magdeburg's actually gonna be our very first target uh we're not gonna call on any of our allies there's no need to call them in okay second idea group time we're just gonna go ahead and pick up innovative ideas just a very good group to have and it stacks up very nicely when we take quality ideas for our third idea group. So this event, when you complete this mission, Renovate Berlin, allows you to develop your capital for cheaper and build buildings here for cheaper until the end of the game, but you lose out on some of that tax income. I can also complete the mission Empower the Junkers, uh, which requires you just to have 60 influence with your nobility and complete renovate berlin this now gives us empowered junkers until the end of the game giving us the early army tradition decay minus one which is actually pretty nice and my boy austria actually just got burgundy oh man yeah so my ally austria is absurdly strong they have both hungary they got burgundy so burgundy is not necessarily in the best of shape uh, because they got beat up by both England and France, but still, no matter what. Tier 4 government reform, we're going to go with the maintain balance of power. 
one more additional diplomat always nice we're also gonna yeah one more diplomat when we rush through diplo ideas here so we're gonna be rocking like five diplomats at least for now i think innovative and diplo gives you another no uh diplo and quality maybe would you look at that we're gonna be at war with france now okay yep secession war let's let's wombo france even though yeah you're definitely stronger than me and austria probably well actually you know austria is probably stronger than them so, uh let's look at this so everybody versus france i think we'll be able to win it'll be tough but i think we'll be able to win i uh also got a really good event here child in the reeds i'm gonna adopt this child as my own it's gonna be a four six five with a weak claim but i'm not judging i'm not judging especially with those types of stats i'll gladly take that any day of the week so uh to be honest with you guys i really didn't haven't done much in this war i've just pretty much watched austria and their allies beat down on france so we're winning by 61 percent right now and uh even england is invading scotland which france for whatever reason thought you know what we're in a good enough position to defend the scots which obviously they're not so uh this is probably the end of france sure enough france was forced to give up a bunch of cores over to burgundy and then also of course nevers was free and even england gained some land and england just looks way too strong and i think they went down the uh traditional british path i've but I also would not be surprised if they went down the Angevin path as well. Alright, I think it's time we relieve the siege here in Konigsberg. It's our guys 1v1 in Bohemias. They're getting a river penalty. We have better discipline, a little bit better morale, and I'd imagine our general's just that little bit better. Yeah, actually our guys way better in fire and shock. The only advantage they have is maneuver and that's it. So that was a pretty easy bet. Oh, actually, we could stack wipe them here. Perfect. <laughs> Bohemia's entire army is now just gone. So in this war with Bohemia, I could actually take everything I have claims on. We're going to get 73 AE, which only amounts to about six nations potentially joining a coalition against us, one of them being Bohemia. So uh, obviously, we're going to go ahead and take this. It's a very uh, historical looking Brandenburg, I must say. And what's pretty cool about us being Brandenburg, since I am now well over, you know, I think it's 250 development. We could actually become a kingdom uh, because we are an elector. So that means our gov cap goes up, which is perfect because I was at my max. So because I conquered both Lusatia and Silesia, I could complete conquer Silesia. So anytime I promote a culture in my nation, I actually lose three AE. So if you guys remember that one mission, renovate Berlin, uh, this is basically the second part of that event. Uh, pretty much unification of Berlin. We get a bunch of development here, and till the end of the game, we get dev costs, construction costs, and prestige in Berlin. We no longer lose out on any of the tax in our capital. I'm actually going to go ahead and wage a war against Poland. They're currently fighting the Ottomans and winning, so I'm going to take advantage of their troops. I'll be down here calling all my allies. We're going to beat down on these guys. So I teach them for breaking their alliance and becoming hostile towards me. First battle against the Poles, we do outnumber them. And... They just have better morale than us, but we outnumber them, and we should be able to just barely win that. Oh my gosh. It was actually a really tough battle. I think I just stack wiped some of their guys, too. Yeah, they only have 18,000. They had 36 before. Nice. Also going to go ahead and march across the straits here, and we're going to try and save the uh, Danes and the Swedes, because they don't... I mean, Denmark does have a larger army than Sweden, but they're busy sieging out in Stockholm, which is understandable. Man, this Swedes hit like a truck, dude. Oh my god. This is kind of funny. We were in this war with uh, Gotland. Gotland was 
actually an ally to Poland and they just got straight up inherited by Poland now so I don't even have to worry about them ever again. In the war with Poland we are just going to take everything we have claims on which is just this area here. If this was a normal game like that I typically play as Brandenburg you know before I even complete this mission I would take as much of the Polish land as possible because when we do just that uh, if we have 200 dev in the Polish region we actually get access to their Age of Reformation bonus which is actually pretty good. We are also a great power now because we have colonialism so we're the sixth greatest power we just took a bunch of death from Poland. I can also now complete a uh, this mission here balance of power we just have to be a great power uh, we have to rival a great power and we have to have an ally who is a great power and then we're going to get 25 power projection and when we actually upgrade our Brandenburg gate in our capital all the way to its top tier level it gives us max effect of absolutism which is amazing uh, especially for dev or uh, which which is amazing especially for discipline and also for for our tier 6 government reform, we actually have a unique one as Brandenburg, Prussia, which is General War Commissaria. Uh, we get yearly army tradition, 0.50, and cheaper mil tech cost, minus 10. And once we actually get to the militarization mechanics as Prussia, we get militarization estate, 0.05, monthly early Prussian militarized society, 0.05. And then, uh, yeah, once we get to regular Prussian militarized society, we get 0.10. And then total Prussian militarized society, 0.13. Which I will show you guys how that works when we get there. Alright, so the Protestant Reformation finally spawned over here in Landschut. So, yeah, we're going to go ahead and join this. We're going to lose 100 prestige, but we're going to get a ton of money. And part of the reason why I am joining the Protestant Reformation because I actually have to be either Protestant or Reformed or Hussite or Anglican in order to form Prussia Admin Tech 10, which is our next Admin Tech. Oh, uh, Austria is trying to unify with Bohemia. I mean, sure, I don't have to expand here anymore, but... Uh, okay, Austria. Whoever floats your boat. Oh, I guess Austria got fed up with me because I'm... Protestant, oh, they want my Bohemian stuff. That makes sense. Well, guess what, Prush, or, uh, well, guess what, Austria? We got Admin Tech 10 now, and now I'm the Kingdom of Prussia. And, of course, we're going to go with those better ideas and all that. If you're not familiar with Prussia or Prussian ideas, because you've yet to play as them, you're in for a treat, because this nation... This nation is disgustingly strong. You get yearly army tradition 0.50, aggressive expansion impact minus 10. You get your stab cost, talents of true faith, yearly army tradition decay, 20% morale of armies, junkers loyalty equilibrium, 20% infantry combat ability, 25% national manpower modifier and recruitment time. Dev cost and tolerance to heretics, and once you finish it all off, you get an additional five discipline. But that's not all. You get access to this freaking mechanic right here, militarization. When you are all the way maxed out with militarization, you get 10% manpower recovery speed, 20% land maintenance modifier, and an additional 5% discipline. And all it costs you is 50 mil points. So if you didn't want to use your mill points for bombarding a fort use it for your militarization and i guarantee you won't regret it and of course this gets upgraded through our missions as well too this this one here army reforms actually bumps it up to early prussian militarization mechanic and this one actually makes it into total prussian prussian militarization so of course when we get there I'll talk about how much stronger both of those government mechanics truly are. And these are just the only two missions that get added, by the way, when you do form Prussia. Otherwise, everything's exactly the same as Brandenburg. 
One other thing I forgot to mention is now that we are Prussia, we get the Prussian Monarchy, which gives us uh, National Unrestimized 2, Monthly War Exhaustion, Monthly Autonomy Change, Maximum Absolutism plus 10, and this is the crazy one. You get a guaranteed plus 3 Monarch Military Skill as well. We are also going to resume our conquests of... Uh, Taking over everything over here along this coastline, completing some missions, and just asserting our dominance over these little small German nations as well. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and attack Lubeck. And this is going to go ahead and call on Hamburg. Uh, this is pretty much the only way I'll be able to get to Hamburg. I'm still trying to figure out how I'm going to get to Bremen. More than likely through Sweden, though I don't have any borders with Sweden anymore, unfortunately. I'm going to have to figure it out, otherwise I'm just going to have to attack a free city, and that's, that's really not that fun. Anyways, uh, let's go ahead and attack Lubeck. I got to take Lomberg from him, and we're going to take over Hamburg. Uh, it might, might be a case where it's one or the other. That's the case, I'm going to take Hamburg over Lomberg. So, uh, my ally... Hesse started this war against Brunswick, and I guess Austria attempted to enforce peace on Hesse. So now I'm at war with Austria, when I really didn't want to be, but I mean, I'll, I'll try and make this work. I really will. Here's the very first battle against our former ally, and uh, yeah, we got better morale. Equal discipline. I got the better general. This might be a stack wipe. Which it was not, unfortunately. I'm going to have to try and siege on this fort before the end of the month. There we go. I only have 240 people here. Once I get my mill power up to 49, barrage it, and then I'm going to assault it. Or even better, the walls are breached, so I'm just going to take it right away. I was taking minimal casualties. Okay, because of my boy Hesse over here, um, in order to make some sort of piece that actually works for me, I'm going to have to pay up like 1,200 ducats, break my alliance with Hesse, give war reps, and I'm going to have to release out the nation of Verdun, all because Hesse was stupid. That issue a little bit later, uh, especially once my army is a little bit stronger against Austria. Austria right now has... A really high amount of troops. They have nine, like they can have up to ninety thousand guys. I can only have about forty thousand guys. So I really need to continue to improve the quality of my army. All right, I finally completed the mission: conquer Lower Saxony, which just requires you to own ten provinces in the Saxony Anhalt area, Lower Saxony, and Vesser areas. You also need to own Osterfriesland, Lundberg, and Magdeburg. And uh, I actually was able to vassalize Verden, who I was forced to release out on that peace deal. And I'll get uh, monthly war exhaustion for the next 20 years. And apparently developing provinces with Saxon or lower Saxon cultures will yield the following benefits for them in the next 20 years. Local years of separatism, local autonomy reduction, and local prosperity growth plus one. Now we also get a bunch of permanent claims on... Braunschweig, North Westphalia, and South Westphalia area. So pretty much, you see Cologne here, we pretty much have a claim on their entire nation at this point. And uh, I'll go ahead and attack them very, very soon. I really need to get rid of Bremen here. That, that's honestly freaking annoying. I'm honestly amazed I didn't get the printing press in my country especially because my capital is the largest province in the entire hre with 38 dev instead it spawned in uh, brunswick's capital uh, which is six dev makes complete sense okay so austria was ousted as the emperor meaning uh saxony here is now the new emperor of the hre and I'm trying to become buddy-buddy with them as much as possible. I'm improving relations with them. I'm going to try and get my trust up with them, ally them. And it's going to allow me pretty much to have free reign to conquer most of the HRE. 
Uh, however, in the meantime, I'm thinking we will just go ahead and attack Cologne. Because we do have quite a few provinces that we have to take away from them. And uh, that's the only area that we actually have permanent claims on other than Bremen. Which Bremen is allied to Gossler and also in the trade league with Lubeck. So we'll get to them a little bit later. But for right now, we're just going to go ahead and attack Cologne. We'll call it France and take as much land as we possibly can. In my war with Cologne, I'm just going to take these three provinces, almost 500 ducats, and uh, war reps from them. That actually connects my land over here. And again, I'm not trying to tick off Saxony too much. I can actually ally them now. Do that before they demand any unlawful territory from me. And hopefully, just hopefully, they don't... Uh, I don't think Al oh, Albania is part of the HRE. Yeah, that's right, because of Austria. Um, hopefully, I don't get called into that war. Well, I guess uh, Bremen is actually not a free city, so I'm just going to go ahead and attack them. Why not? I'll call in the French. We could actually steal a bunch of money from uh, Lubeck as well, too. All right, after that war, I have a ton of aggressive expansion, so I'm going to chill for quite some time. Just prove relations with as many of these German nations as possible. You may also be asking yourself, well, Chairman, why don't you just destroy the HRE? Well, because I have Mega Great Britain over here in Austria, and obviously the French are going to be licking their lips to start invading Germany as well, too. And I don't feel like dealing with them just yet. We'll eventually get to those nations you know, especially like France and Austria later, but, uh, yeah, no, I, that's why we're keeping the HRE around, even though it does mean I incur more aggressive expansion. All right, it's time for us to choose our next idea group. Uh, we're just going to go ahead, choose economic, economic paired with quality ideas gives you an additional five discipline plus economic ideas are just very, very nice. I started a second war against Cologne. Uh, I'm going to be taking everything that I have a claim on from them. This will give me a bit of, you know, it's going to make my coalition hate me a little bit more, but not too many other nations would really join. The, the countries that would potentially join are already countries that hate me regardless. So, let's we'll do this. And I believe that should have completed a mission at Westphalian Conquest. We just need to own eight provinces in the barn. Braunschweig, North, North Westphalia, or South Westphalia areas. We get permanent claim on the Rhine area. Our ruler gains an additional admin point. And some dev is going to be rewarded in all provinces in that area. And then the next one basically wants us to conquer this area right here. So before I even select that mission, let me go ahead and core all this stuff up. Uh, this way we're not paying additional for the extra development that we're going to get from the mission. I finally got my army up to 50 army professionalism, meaning I can complete this mission professional army. Requires us to complete the mission renovate Berlin, have 50 army professionalism, and we get reform of the Brandenburg army. We get 20 army tradition, 150 mil power, and 2 army professionalism. And our next couple missions is Edict of Potsdam. I have to have 100 religious unity and reform just has to be enabled. This one, which we actually completed already, we just have to have a level 7 in government reforms. We get Prussian legal system. Which either we take 200 admin or we get a cheaper admin tech cost till the end of the game, minus 10. Which I kind of like the sound of that more. Uh, army reforms, we just have to have 115% discipline, uh, either complete quality, quantity, offensive, defensive ideas, or gain at least 12 mil a month, have at least 100 army force limit, and have at least 70 prof army professionalism, and 90 army tradition, which I am always like around 100 anymore. Um, and then we have enlightened absolutism, which we have to get our absolutism all the way up to 80 and we have to embrace enlightenment which doesn't happen until 1700 and the protestant leagues are forming 
I'm gonna see where my allies go, like France, Ottomans, Russia. I mean, if they join the Protestant side, obviously I have to join the Protestant side as well. All right, so far we got France and the Ottomans on Protestant. I gotta join the Protestants as well. I'm also now the leader. But maybe once my boy Aust or Russia actually joins, uh, maybe maybe we'll think about doing this war. All right, I think now's a good time to do this because I could get all my friendos in Poland with Lithuania is not joining, so that makes things easier on the Russian front and the Ottoman side, so we can actually beat down on uh, Austria a little bit faster. So let's go ahead and do this. Plus, this will get some of those coalition guys off my back. I'm also going to go ahead and start up my Golden Era. Give my army a little bit of a boost, even though eh, 7.3 morale in 1582, and that's really disgusting. Army is really, really strong. We have, like, guaranteed, like, 100 army tradition, super high morale. Army professionalism is pretty, pretty high as well. Uh, Spain and Portugal being in this war so uh, I'm gonna have to peace out France is like done Fr France got completely annihilated here uh, but we're gonna have to give up religious supremacy and then the nation in the south up here is gonna be vassalized I'm okay with that we'll come back to them whatever at least I'm still allied to both the Ottomans and Russia Oh, in Denmark. Can't forget about them. So I'm just going to chill here. And we're just going to start prepping up for just an all-out just conquest and wars and stuff. We have truces with pretty much everybody over here anyways. We got to wait regardless. So might as well use this time to just build up our nation even more so. So we actually have 100 religious unity right now. We can go ahead and complete the Edict of Potsdam. Where all the Catholics hate us, we lose a bunch of money, lose two stab, we gain a bunch of dev, or we gain 200 admin. I like this one. Uh, I can also do this develop uh, Konigsberg mission, but I'm going to wait until I build at least 25 universities. Reason being for that, because it actually gives us a golden age without actually expending our golden era. So, I mean, I already used it earlier because we fought in the... 30 years war however I want to I, I'm pretty sure we're gonna be able to have a second one and it lasts until our ruler dies so I'm gonna do that once the secession between these two happen I mean I am completely out of manpower but I need to take one province from Austria which I just annexed both Dortmund and Cologne and I'm gonna be getting a pretty sizable coalition within the HRE so honestly now is the best time to take out its largest member which would be Austria they're at war with a bunch of Italian nations I can call in the Ottomans Denmark France pretty close if I paid off all of Russia's debt I could probably get them in this war as well but honestly I'll take these three nations I think we'll be able to win this against Austria For my fifth idea group, kind of being between either offensive or quantity ideas. I mean, I'm already getting fantastic generals as is. I have pretty high discipline at 122% discipline. Honestly, I'm thinking we're going to go with quantity ideas. Because eventually I do need almost 200,000 troops for one of these missions. So I might as well start getting in on that plus additional manpower never hurts especially since i'm like capped out at 80 000. you know like austria can have like upwards of like 130 160 000. in this war with austria i'm gonna just take the one province that i need from them and i'm also gonna go ahead and get my boy the ottomans pretty much the rest of the balkans here when you also complete the develop konigsberg mission you also get university of konigsberg where you can either sponsor the university and you get free innovativeness, 100 admin, and until the end of the game, local dev costs and institution growth in Konigsberg, or do nothing. I'm obviously going to choose that top option. I had to build a bunch of regimental camps, uh, but now I could complete the 
army reforms mission which i just need 115 percent discipline either finish quality quantity offensive defensive ideas or gain 12 mil per month i finished up quality ideas and then have a land force amount 100 and have either 70 army profession have either 70 army professionalism or 90 army tradition which i'm at like permanent 100 as of right now so i don't ever have to worry about army tradition at all in this upgrades our uh so we're, when we complete that mission we get great prussian military reform giving us 100 mil five army professionalism and 20 army tradition and it also upgrades our uh militarization mechanic here so now we have prussian militarization which at its max we actually get 10 discipline as opposed to five prior we're at war with spain over the nation of berg let's see how this goes we're gonna be outnumbered by like ten thousand guys my guys have a little bit less discipline because i upgraded my militarization mechanic but i have better morale they have a little bit better tactics my generals are just flat out better with the entire north rhineland area under our control i could finally complete the duchy of cleves mission this gives me permanent claims on the lower Rhineland area, Hesse area, Palatinite area. It also makes the cathedral here in Cologne upgrade to tier 1. And on top of that, we also get dev costs in these areas for like the next 20 years. It's pretty much the game wants me to conquer all of this right now. And once I do that, I get permanent claims on the entire South and North German regions, which means... We got a lot of work to do. All right, I got a couple different wars going on here. <clears throat> I got one against Trier, where I'm going to be able to take everything in that Rhineland area that I need. Full annex, well, not full annex, but take everything there. That's going to be 86 AE. And then I have this war against Cologne and Frankfurt, where I get to annex both of these nations. It's going to be even more AE. It's going to take off even more people in Germany. But it's Germany, so I don't really care as much. And I'm at war with the Palatinate over here. And soon enough, I'm about to be at war with Saxony in a sec here. So uh, let's go ahead and start that one. It's going to basically stop some of these truces, well, stop some of these nations from being able to join a coalition against me because, well, they're going to have a truce with me. And then my next target's going to be Mines, and after them is going to be Austria, and that's going to complete that mission, giving me permanent claims on all of uh, on all of Germany, pretty much. And yes, I do need this one province from Gilray also. It's a coalition against me. I gotta attack Austria right now. I'll call in both Savoy and actually, I'm not going to call in either of my allies. I just need to win this war against Saxony, take that one province, then I can beat up on Austria, well, focus all my efforts into Austria. And I mean, it would be great if I could get somebody like Ottomans in here, but Ottomans have way too much debt right now. It's insane. Same thing with France, but I don't think I would really want France in that war. But yeah, I'll go ahead and just do this, just to get this war started. I can apparently complete this mission. I just need to own 10 provinces over here, I guess. And now I get uh, the Prussian Rhine for the next 20 years. AE impact, overextension modifier, minus 5, and permanent claims in all of Germany. It's a lot of land I gotta take, including Bohemia. In this war against Austria, I'm just taking this one province over here. And then I'm going to release out the nation of Hungary from them. It's the weak in, weak in Austria. Just a little bit and we're cutting them in half. Also thinking I'm going to go ahead and ally Hungary. So then that way Austria doesn't get to ally them either. Because me and Austria hate each other so much. Alright, my truce with Austria is over. So I'm going to call on all my friends. We're going to beat up on Austria. Just trying to knock them down even more. We're going to attack them for the... For the province of Baden and maybe two years from now maybe I'll be able to call in Hungary and they can help me conquer some more stuff but 
Either way, we're, we're gonna beat them down. I'm gonna take a decent amount of German stuff from them, and uh, we're just gonna keep trying to break them down in terms of size. So in that war with Austria, I just gave France a bunch of land back. I'm okay with that. I'd rather have a strong ally in France that I can kind of depend on to help me beat up on Austria. That works out pretty well. Okay, so it's 1666, and I'm thinking it's time for us to just dismantle the HRE. I just got a claim on Trier, who is an elector. And then, oh, I also have to get down to Saxony, or Salzburg. I didn't realize they were an elector. Hold on. This changes things a little bit. I need Thuringia, Salzburg, Trier, Saxony, Mines, Palatinate. Okay, so I'm going to attack the nation of Trier, calling France. Then after that, I'm going to attack the nation of Mines, so I can occupy both Mines and Thuringia. And then we're probably just going to have to separately attack somebody like Salzburg. Not too sure how that's going to work just yet. Okay, so I did something kind of crazy here. I attacked. Augsburg to call in Salzburg so I can occupy their capital. I attack mines to occupy th both them in Thuringia. I attack Trier so I can occupy their capital and this Martian so I can occupy Saxony's capital. Now I'm going to go ahead and attack Würzburg, call in all my allies. We're going to occupy them, the Palatinate, and Austria's capital. We're going to dismantle the HRE before 1700 here, so let's go ahead and do just that. This honestly should not be that bad. Fingers crossed, of course. Funny enough, Britain also just attacked Austria, even though they just lost like all their coastline to Brittany. But anyways, I just took Vienna, so now I can dismantle the HRE. Get 100 prestige. 200 Splendor, a bunch of power projection. And now we can pretty much expand in the HRE all that we want. I can also go back to being a kingdom because I lost my electorship since I'm Protestant. And I can actually become an empire, which is even better. I don't have really have to worry about rebels whatsoever. I can also apparently complete Charlemagne's legacy. Cool. Defend the HRE. Cool. And as for these wars, to be honest with you, so we're just going to... The Trier, I really don't care at all. I'll just force my religion on you. War reps, money, whatever. Augsburg. I really don't know. I mean, you, white piece, I guess. I also apparently lost Ministralis promotion because... The HRE no longer exists, so we're going to go with Strength and Noble Privileges. It's for Dith Martian. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just going to do White Peace. Just to get these truces done, and then I can kind of redo these wars. Mines I will full annex, though. As for their ally Thuringia, I'm just going to White Peace them. And as for Würzburg, I'm just going to make them break their line. Or I guess they're no longer allied to Austria. Even better, I'm just going to white piece them. So this gives us a chance to recuperate, do the wars I actually want to do. And uh, yeah, we're going to go on to beat the crap out of all these German boys. Part of my mission tree whatsoever. I mean, I mean, I guess I could keep them. I just can't expand over here. It just, yeah, I guess I'll, I guess I'll just keep hungry because I mean, I have no intention of like annexing them or integrating them. And I mean, if by some miracle I do integrate them after my ruler dies, I'll just release them as a vassal or something. So, cool. I guess I got hungry now. So I've decided I'm gonna refrain from doing any war until we get imperialism cb because i'm going to be able to basically conquer all if not most of germany within like a couple years pretty much and especially like austria 
like Austria, I'll be able to take like a ton of land from. Uh, but all these little German guys that are basically between me and Austria, I'll be able to wipe out and you know, like one war pretty much. Finally, after reaching a hundred army professionalism, I could take an army with a state mission for this mission 204 summit, 100% army professionalism. You get the event on war happens and an army with a state until the end of the game. Reinforced cost minus 15%, army drill gain modifier plus 25%, and regiment drill loss minus 25%. Plus, it upgrades our Prussian militarization to total Prussian militarization. So on war, uh, we could basically choose this guy to be a general, gain admin, or uh, be a advisor, which I'm just going to make him be an advisor. More monarch points in the long run. And how it affects our Prussian militarization is this. So we can boost our militarization, you know, as usual. We get get to keep the previous modifiers of 10 discipline manpower recovery speed land maintenance modifier but we can also do reform the military manual which reduces our war exhaustion increases our reinforced speed and lowers the amount of regiment drill loss we we have or we could do this one maneuvers for additional movement speed and for these two buttons you just need to have your Prussian militarization up to like 20 but obviously it's better to just have your militarization at like 100% the entire time. Now that we have the Imperialism CB, it's time to Wombo with everybody. We're going to go ahead and attack Wuttenberg. We're going to co belligerent Thuringia and Inglostadt along with Lubeck. And uh, yeah, we'll also do Bohemia as well. We'll go ahead and call on all of our allies except for Denmark. And uh, yeah, we're gonna full we'll annex all these nations right away. All right, I'm gonna start another war this time against Saxony, and this is gonna call on the remainder of the German boys, such as Salzburg, Nuremberg, Dithmarschen, Rothenburg, and uh, this is even gonna call on Poland as well. But I paid off a ton of debt for the Ottomans, so plus I have Russia, and I could call on all my allies in that war. So yeah, we're we're gonna annex everybody right away. All right, while I'm fighting like half the world right now, well, half of Europe, uh, we're gonna make it even worse on myself, and we're gonna go ahead and do a nationalism uh, conquest on Austria. I'm gonna go ahead on both Ottomans and France. Promise a land for France. They're probably not gonna get anything, but. Um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and do this war. Especially because they just took over this little OPM guy and pretty much their whole army's right here. Alright, our truce with Bohemia is over, so we're going to go ahead and inv invade them super fast. Nationalism is the way. Denmark, Serbia, eh, we'll go on Savoy. Why not? We're going to full annex these guys also. And as you guys notice, I haven't peace out with Austria yet. That's because, oh, never mind. I actually can. I could get my 99% peace deal. That's going to give me give me over 228% overextension. Nice. And now I can go ahead and make peace with, uh, with Saxony. So let's do that. Overextension's just a number, who cares? I can also complete this mission, German Confederation, giving me an increase in my governing capacity by 10% till the end of the game, and admin efficiency plus 5% till the end of the game. And that's because I own at least 100 provinces between North and South Germany. Which I don't think they're, yeah, that's not gonna help me out. Oh my God, that overextension is disgusting. 438%. We're about to get rebel bombed so bad. Alright, we are almost Germany at this point. I need to take the city at home. I need to finish full annexing Bohemia. I need to take this area from Austria. And then we have pretty much all of our... Oh, and I need one province from Denmark, which is Schleswig up here. And then I have every single province I actually get a claim on. Oh, and Switzerland from Savoy. I can't forget about that. 
However, in my case, we are going to finish up the Brandenburg Prussian mission tree before we form Germany, and then we're going to see how much time we have left in the game, and I may add, end up just going on to uh, complete the German mission tree as well. Because I embrace the Enlightenment and I have 80 Absolutism, I can complete this mission in Light and Absolutism. So we gain government reform progress, monthly autonomy change, and max absolutism till the end of the game. And our queen actually gains a one admin. Cool. We are officially in the Age of Revolutions. Pretty much completed all the Age objectives. And during this time period, as Prussia, we actually get a unique age bonus, which is the fire damage received minus 20%, which is pretty nice, especially in this uh, period of time where guns dominate everything. The uh, very first thing I am going to select is Unrestricted Conquest. When that time comes, though, is I need to start taking over parts of China to complete this mission tree. Okay, finally, our conquests in Europe are like completely done until we eventually get into the German mission tree if I get there um, but again all we have to do at this point are just these three missions and we're done with the Brandenburg Prussian mission tree so I gotta rush down trade ideas or get a merchant all the way over here in Canton and then I can complete that mission Okay, finally, after completing trade ideas, I can complete the Emden Company, giving me a permanent claim on Macau, and we get trade efficiency and cost to promote mercantilism till the end of the game. We also get a two-decker flagship named the King of Prussia in Osterfriesland. And then I can actually construct the Kiel Canal. Let's go ahead and do that. And I was actually able to threaten a war with UA. Uh, so I can actually get Macau away from them. So I get trade steering for the next 20 years, 33%. And adding our provinces to a trade company will grant them one development for them as well as one mercantilism for us. And you complete this mission by just simply becoming the strongest trade power in Canton. Perfect. So the year 1722 and we have completed all of the Brandenburg Russian missions only thing that's left to do at this point is well let's form Germany yes please new ideas and ambitions German ideas if you're not familiar with them uh, are really really good typically you're able to form Germany a lot earlier than what I did it's just I kept the HRE around a little bit longer just because I had a strong Poland, France, Britain, uh, and Denmark to kind of deal with. But Imperial German ideas, you get infantry combat ability, legitimacy, diplo relations, unrest, tech cost, discipline, trade efficiency, army tradition, admin efficiency, and goods produced plus 20. And as I mentioned earlier, we do have a little bit of a mission tree at 1722. I don't know or at least I don't think we'll be able to complete this mission tree because it would require me to own it would basically require me to go on like a full-on invasion and almost form like the Roman Empire at this point I mean I could do this it's gonna give me permanent claims on the entire French low countries Italy Poland this mission here the burgers I guess are pretty happy now, even here, I would have to conquer the entire Baltic with them as well. Anyways, that's going to conclude it for today's video of Mission Tree Only. Uh, next time, we are going to be covering the nation of Castile and Spain. Uh, so, we also have an achievement that we are going to be going for in that video as well, which is Golden Century, which is just simply as the Spanish complete their entire mission tree. Hope you guys really enjoyed this video, and if you did, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. I will see you guys in the next one. Chairman out.